here. Let's talk about the picks we're going to make. Yes. Let's not make picks. Let's so, talk about the picks we're going to make. I've been trying to pick your guys' brains for the last three or four weeks. Like, how are we going to do the NFL preview this year? Like, we usually go division to division. It takes a while. Then we put it in an envelope, and we don't open the envelope until the Super Bowl has ended to see how dumb we sounded back in August. And, you know, we'll still do that, but I, I, I think we need some new categories. I think we need some new picks. We need to dare to be different a little bit. Now, just today, we're just going to talk about picking what we're going to pick. Uh, Tomorrow, we will do some individual awards, MVP, Rookie of the Year, Best Kicker, what have you, that kind of stuff. And we'll pick those picks. But today is about the teams, how these teams look what you're thinking about the teams that are going to be playoff teams, the teams that aren't going to be playoff teams. And then next week, as we really get down to the countdown to kickoff next week, we'll make the official Rob Dibble show NFL preview 2024 extravaganza picks. But today just picking what kind of picks we should make. And I was thinking as far as, AFC, NFC picks, what team is a no-doubter? No doubt about it. This team will be in the playoffs. Whatever I write down and put in that envelope, it will come true come playoff time. No doubters. Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know about the Chiefs, man. Like, you say that, but remember last year, they were on the brink. They were like... They were on the brink of being trash, and everybody's like, oh, what's going on with this team? And then they sneak their way into the playoffs. We're not talking AFC champs. We're just talking make the postseason. Just making it in. Just making it in. Now, winning two in a row is tough in this league, but three in a row, Dibs, three in a row. And you got talking about playoffs, man. We're talking about playoffs. But you got the one lady that's going to be shadowing over the whole stadium that nobody's going to come see Kansas City. Now that it's official... Taylor Swift's going to take all the shine away from that Super Bowl championship ring. I heard she's wearing a new bra that she's got better posture. Yeah. So that better so posture. Yeah, better posture. Where'd you pick that up, Dibs? Yeah, Kurt, uh, right. you know, the internet. <laughs> where I get most of my news. Kurt, Kansas City Chiefs, is that going to be your pick as well? They're in the playoffs. They're de- you think See, they're definitely in, in the playoffs. Automatic, definitely. though. I don't want to be automatic with my picks. I got a feeling that I write KC down and I open that envelope up on Super Bowl and you're like, oh, wow, well, everyone thought that back in the day. <laughs> Is that too of an easy pick? Should we make? Should we nix that pick and not pick it because it's going to be too easy? Do you have one in the NFC that you have a no doubter dibs? No doubt, this team's going to be in the playoffs in the NFC, and you better not say your Cowboys. I was going to say Eagles. Really, yeah. Eagles? Nick shaking his head. I don't know about that. Kurt. There was something in the water up there in the end of the season. What was it? I can't remember what it was. It was something that we were. We were wondering if anybody's cheating on each other's girlfriends. We were wondering if everybody hates the head coach. The wagons were not being pulled in the same direction Is at the Jaylen end of that season. Hurts really a leader? Talking that trash? <laughs> With the noise in San Francisco, what do you make oh, of them? Are they the automatic? San, now San Francisco's got a lot of talent. How pretty they are. Got a lot of talent. And there you that's the thing. This gives the sense, San man. Fran the thumbs up. All right. Well, not, we'll not be... enough ball to go around. See, I like this pick and to make this pick because I feel like whatever we pick will not happen. Like the no doubter, we could we could all have three different teams for each conference and they could all be wrong. The zero and six, and then that would be good for our listeners because they'll know in twenty twenty five whatever we pick <laughs> is not going to come true. It's been proven. All right, next pick to picks. The new playoff team. Do you want me to refresh everybody's memory on who was in the playoffs last year? Yeah, I need that help. Your top two teams were the Ravens and the 49ers in each conference, respectively. Then you had, in the AFC, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Texans, the Browns, the Dolphins, and the Steelers, if you remember, snuck in by the skin of their teeth. And then on the NFC side, including the Niners, were the Cowboys, the Lions, the Buccaneers, the Eagles, the Rams got in, and the Packers. What team did I not name that is going to be a new playoff team? I like this question. 
because there's I always the Atlanta one. Falcons. I kind of like what they're doing down there. Yeah. I do like the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I don't know about your Colts, Federico, and my Colts either. I just don't know about that. Either the Panthers, all my teams, huge question marks. Out of all my teams, I would throw the Bears in the mix just because I, I, I sniff what's going on and I kind of like it, but wow. still a rookie quarterback. It's still the Bears, and I do think Green Bay and Detroit are going to be good teams. So that's that's going to be tough. Here's one for you, Dibs. Cincinnati Bengals getting back, right? I don't know. I just read uh, Bengals Mike, getting Mike back, Petralia's right? notes today. Oh, no, he don't like what Joe he sees. Joe Burrow was not good being rushed. Did not throw the ball well. What quarterback have we read good reports on? I heard Bo Nix looks good, but has not been playing <laughs> I, I much. Heard those same reports. Um. <laughs> What team didn't make the playoffs that will make the playoffs this year? I can't believe you didn't throw out the Seattle Bengals. Seattle Seahawks. Very interesting. They won nine games last year. Yeah, didn't they're make it. right on the cusp. Scrams. Right on the cusp. Here's another one for you that wasn't in the mix. What about those Jacksonville Jaguars? How they're going to be I this year? Last year? They're getting back. That's that's a possibility. That would mean your Colts don't make it. Yeah, I would think so, too. I would think because Texans are going to be there. Texans are going to be great. Um, there, do, is there a world again where we have the NFC Central or North? Is it the North or the Central? AFC, excuse me. The Browns, the Bengals, um, the Here's Steelers. Here's the thing I like about Jacksonville. After the first game in December, they've got Titans, Jets, Raiders, Titans, Colts to finish the season. I could see four or five wins there. Like if they're healthy and kicking some butt, taking names. Yeah, I like your Jacksonville pick. Is he the highest paid quarterback in the history of the world right now? Trevor Lawrence? Is that still a thing? I Isn't thought it was I thought it was Herbert. But did Herbert surpass that after Lawrence got it? I forget how Nick's that works. Said, I think it's Herbert. Everybody's going people keep saying, I keep seeing it on the internet. What has he done? Because a lot, a lot of people have Herbert in their top five. So Herbert also and Harbaugh could be one of those teams that would make the playoffs that didn't make it last year. I can see that happening, man. We were talking to Link yesterday, and like you were saying, he's not looking at Denver. He's not looking at the Chargers. He only cares about the Chiefs for right. his Raiders. And, man, I, I don't know if you would want to do that with what Harbaugh's success rate has been everywhere he's been. Everywhere he is, I never count Harbaugh out. That guy is, he's a mastermind. He's got a great, is this the best quarterback that Harbaugh has it had? Might be. Could be. This could be. Can we go back to Jacksonville for a second? What you got? Mac Jones is backing up Trevor Lawrence. And if you go on their page, the, he says he's having fun again. It's back to oh, football. Yeah. No pressure. No, no pressure. No pressure, Mac Jones. If, if Trevor Lawrence goes down, does Mac Jones get him to the postseason? No, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Mac Jones having does. a great time because that clipboard is so light, and it's his best friend, and he gets to be kind of a coach and tell Trevor what he sees. I bet you that's a lot of fun. Pretty good team, though. It's been a lot of fun. They might be my Evan team. Evan Ingram had a great might be year last team. year. ATN's healthy. Ravens, Bills, Chiefs, Texans, Browns, Dolphins, Steelers. That was the AFC. Niners, Cowboys, Lions, Bucks, Eagles, Rams, Packers. That was the NFC. Who does not make the playoffs again? Can Baker Mayfield do it again in that horrible division in the NFC South? Do the Rams finally break apart? Or is McVay will them in? Really? The Packers are for real. You guys really believe in this Jordan Love stuff? Ooh, what about the other side? Will this be the year that Tomlin finally doesn't get in? I mean, I don't see the Vikings and the Bears making that much of a move over the Packers. I don't either. I really don't. And I certainly don't know. I do think the Falcons are going to the postseason, so that means the Saints have to either fall back or move ahead of the Buccaneers. I could see... The, the Falcons and the Saints overtaking the Buccaneers. All right, get your picks ready, and then get your Super Bowl yep. picks ready as well because, you know, we will always do that. Rams going to be worth a damn this year? I didn't think they should have made the playoffs last year. They'll find some diamond in the rough draft pick we've never heard of from... I thought McVay was retiring. Does he, he want to retire every year? That's like he, he puts that, that vibe out there every year. 
I don't, I don't know if I could. Do I, it. I thought I'm this last year with I'm the Rams, uh, the year after they won the Super Bowl, I thought they were done because they, you know, basically gave up everything they possibly could to get Von Miller on that team. And I thought, man, this team was going to be donezo for years to come. And look, last year, six seed, NFC playoffs. Von Miller still playing? Is he still running around? He got hurt up in Buffalo. We haven't seen him Buffalo. since. He's got chicken farm. I think that's on the chicken farm. Chicken. He loves being a chicken farmer. That's another one. Buffalo Bills, two seed. Big year. That's a vision. Big year for a lot Kansas of people. City, Baltimore, Texans. I think are going to be tight. That's a, that's a tough call. That I can't wait to see that pick at the end of the year. Who makes it? Totally. He'll, we I, pick the Bills every year, and every year they disappoint. I just think the AFC is so loaded right now with some of the best quarterbacks. Like really, I can't wait to see Lamar this year. What he looks like. Like, there's so many guys too. You have yet to see unleashed. I feel like the the quarterback I've seen out of these playoff teams has been Patrick Mahomes. Look at that. The team that's won back to back Super Bowls. I've seen more actual play in pads with their quarterback than I've seen with anyone else. Imagine that, man. Andy Reid. He's so stupid. Doesn't he know that you can't play your quarterback right now? Nobody's playing their quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is sitting. Jaden Daniels is sitting. Caleb Williams is sitting. What's Patrick Mahomes doing out there? Just making more State Farm commercials. What is he doing playing? Maybe there's something into it, like actually practicing and playing with the guys and having your pads on and going through the reps and doing the actual work. Maybe. I don't know. I'm looking at Brock Purdy, Jordan Love. Oh, I can't wait for the NFC. Brock Purdy I, I winning these, this I conference think again. These, I think some of these teams take a step back. I'm worried about your Cowboys. I'm always worried I'm about, worried about, your, about Cowboys. your Cowboys. There's way too much drama in Big D that's the, not really productive to the team winning football. There seems games. to always be like drama with the Yankees and the Cowboys yeah. and the Lakers. And it's, and it's like and ownership. The, and, and the ownership right ownership. now is like dangling money you gotta pay micah parsons they just paid uh one of their their cornerbacks some money um dak prescott it's like why don't you just pay these guys and and let them worry about football why why do you the the one thing guys worry about the most is security and not the contract but they want to be paid with like the top five guys so if you got a top five guy like a cd lamb micah parsons pay him that way they don't have to worry about, am I getting paid as much as that guy? Am I getting paid as much as that guy? That seems to be a thing the last 10 years with these athletes, which is different than in my day. I mean, there was a couple of guys, Ricky Henderson every year. I got to be the high, one of the top three guys paid. That was his big thing. And that, and that was what caused him to, to go bananas every year. That's why he moved around so much. I, I would say that him paying people in the past in this ownership group Listen, I think the players are honestly like when you balance it out and seeing what the owners actually take in as a take, it, like everyone is grossly, grossly underpaid but I'd compared like to the ownership see, group. How much money does Dak Prescott merchandise bring in? How much does Micah Parsons, CD Lamb? That's that, I would like to know those numbers. We'll never know those, but Jerry Jones does. Stephen Jones does. They know exactly how much. How many jerseys walk through that gate every day? How many have been walking out of those stores? Things like that. But you know? when do I stop? Like, just like Gundy says, when is the negotiation period done? When can we finally get to football? And we and like you're saying, okay, I paid Dak, and now I gave him $60 million for the next four years. Uh, two years from now, we won a Super Bowl, and now he wants to get paid again. We just paid you. Yeah, but I want to know. Okay, fine. We got to do this again. And like, oh, just pay the guy. And then I, I pay him. And then Cooper Rush all of a sudden blows up and he's our starter. What? I got to pay Cooper Rush $60 million a but year? Now you're in a situation right now with Dallas. You don't have a, a number one running back. I know. And and that's because. That's what because you you're like, <laughs> you, you started you, like dangling money and then it got to the point where. And now Tony Pollard got old, and now he's gone. But Tony Pollard is looking at the deal that Jerry Jones gave Ezekiel Elliott and then stacking up his numbers and his usage and going, what? And then he's like, bye bye I can get more money in Tennessee. And just this, this waterfall of paying people is tough to stop because the guy who says, no, I'm not going to pay you, Dak, Dak's going to go to another team and get that money somehow, some way. And everybody's going to be mad at Jerry Jones and saying the window's closed. You should have paid that guy. It's, it's a tough balancing act that these cajillionaires are trying to do because 
I don't think Dak Prescott's worth sixty million a year. I don't. I don't. You know. I don't like Dak Prescott. Right. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with his playoff. But I'm with you that the Cowboys would be so but much that's better. That's why I pay you sixty million a year for I me know. to win Super Bowls. And I feel like you know, once we got to forty million a year, everybody would be comfortable with that, right, and me, we can me just me focus on the football baseball for a second. So you paid Aaron Judge all that money. Is he worth it this year? Yeah. Yes yeah, and no. Yeah. If you don't win a World Series, yeah. you got Garrett Cole, Rodon, Aaron Judge. You're thinking about paying five hundred million for I Soto. I know. So if I throw all of that money, so so let's just correlate this to the, the Cowboys now. So now you're talking about it with Dak, Micah, C D. Am I gonna pay these guys all the top amount if we don't win another Super Bowl? So a little bit I, I do agree with Jerry Jones there. I can't just keep throwing money at these problems and you guys don't win. We haven't won since 96. Now it's starting to become an issue. That's why I love incentives. I, th- I think that when you have a contract that is incentive-laden, as, as they like to say, I love that because it's like, prove it. If you want to be a $60 million... Give me million $5 dollar, million for each playoff win for Dak. Hell, I'll give you $50 million for the Super Bowl. I'll pay you yeah. a ten million, fifteen million because per you're going to make a billion off of winning the Super right. Bowl. Win the Super Bowl, that's going to make me a bunch of money. You're going to make a bunch of money, and I'm going to give you that incentive bonus. Uh, and, and I understand it's a team game, man. I understand it's a team game. So, like wins, look at yards, the, the things right. that you do to produce, each incentive will get you more money to make. Look at all the money Aaron Rodgers has made in the game. One Super Bowl. Yes, he got three MVPs, or is it four MVPs, but he's got one Super Bowl. Just last year, he played four plays and got, what, $25 million, $28 million, $30 million, $40 million, something like that. That wasn't worth got it, a lot of obviously. Million. That wasn't worth it. As many eight jerseys you sold. I agree with you on some of this stuff, especially with the QB, man. Some of these QBs are making $200 million. Some of these NBA guys are making these $250 million contracts. You have no NBA championships to show for it. I know, it's tough. But it's tough because as – as much as I would love to run my fantasy NBA team where I have nothing but Serbians and my itches team, if I don't pay that best uh, Bogdanovich, Bogdan Bogdanovich is my team, and I'm like, no, man, I'll pay you $20 million if you win the NBA Finals, and I'll pay you $2 million now. Sounds like a great deal, but he's going to go to the Utah Jazz, and they're just going to give him $40 million. So, like, the, you know, it is still a league with other opponents trying to get all the best players and win all the games. And so that's the the other balancing act nobody thinks of as well. Like, Dak's going to go to another team. Jerry's going to have to fill the quarterback position with somebody. These these things aren't just going to stay vacant and just because we don't want to pay this tag. Listen, I hear you. It's one of my favorite Shinedown songs called Cut the Cord. (laughs) you got to know when to cut the cord and get rid of this dude. It's tough, though, because Jerry's made this bed. That's right. He's made this bed. And these people love Dak. It's just like they love Tony Romo. You covet this. It's like Tony Romo had two playoff wins. Made $200 bucks. Now he's making $20 million a year in the booth. There's there's a love affair with some of these guys that don't win. Well, that's true, and there's also a, just a hope that one of them's going to turn into either Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady, and that, there's only one homie, th- right? Homie. And, and they're the other guys are not worth the same amount of money. No. They're not, but th- that's what the price tag is if you want to just take the chance at the crap table to say sixty million on this guy could be in good. And that's what that's the dice we're rolling. That's why in. I didn't pick the Cowboys. Could be one of those uh, not making the playoff there teams next week. All right, Ben's got some baseball cards he must have found. Oh yeah, what's well, a catcher day today? Oh, catcher it's day. Jim Leyritz day today on the Rob yeah. Dibble Show. So he's got a bunch of catchers he's going to throw at me. Quiz next. the dibs. Quiz the dibs coming up next on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Darnell on your afternoon drive. Happy Tuesday to everybody. Hopefully you're safe and sound, and you're not near one of those 29 roads that yeah. were closed in Connecticut because of the storms. We'll be right back on Fox Sports Radio.